Let's go JavaScripting! Hi everybody and welcome to another exciting edition of Boring JavaScript. I'm your host of The Virtual Void, aka Mike Smith, and today we're going to be talking about utterances. Now, a number of weeks ago, I did a boring JavaScript on speech synthesis, and that, uh, that used the basic speech synthesis modules that included within your computer that the browser does support and allows you to speak text on your browser through your speaker. And we had Sarah Bernhardt doing, uh, uh, Oliver, excuse me, we had Sarah Bernhardt doing Hamlet Soliloquy, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Well, embedded within that, I, I very briefly mentioned something called an utterance. And an utterance is what actually creates the speech synthesis itself, or the speech synthesis object itself, to get ready to be played. And then the speech synthesis ob object actually spoke it. So today, we're going to show you how utterances work and all the different things you can do with it. Want to see how it works? Let's get started. So let's take a look at the browser window first before we do anything else. Now, I took this from our original speech synthesis boring JavaScript, but back then all we had in there was just the speech synthesis and what do you want me to say? And that's it. So when I typed in good morning, or good afternoon, afternoon, I can't spell, and I clicked on say it. Good afternoon. It said it. But there's a whole lot you can do with an utterance. And so what I got here for the rest of this web page here is showing you everything you can do with an utterance. For example, you'll see it, everything inside here. You can set the language of the utterance, the pitch, the rate, the, the rate, the voice, and the volume. So for example, if I change the volume from one to zero and then click on say it, nothing happens. If I do it half voice and hit say it. Good afternoon. I hope you heard it. And if I go back to all the way to one, which is full volume. Good afternoon. It goes back to full volume. You can select the different voices if they are if they happen to be available. Now, at the bottom of the screen there uh, are the different voices are available that are available for English US. And here are the different languages that are available. And the reason I haven't displayed here is that I found out when testing this is that if I click on this select right here, which I'm seeing on my screen here, all the different languages, I notice on your screen it's not showing the different languages. So I've got them listed at the bottom there. So in their voices, for example, English US, we have four different ones. Microsoft David, which is the default one. There's Mark. Let's see what Mark sounds like. Good afternoon. Let's see what Zira sounds like. Good afternoon. And finally, let's see what Google UA, US English looks like, sounds like. Good afternoon. So as you can tell there, with if you have those voices available within the different languages, you can change the different voices. Well, what about the different languages? Well, you can change those too. So I'm gonna switch from English US to German. And as you can tell here, we're gonna have Google Deutsch, Deutsch, excuse me, is the one that's available. And what I'm going to do here is let's throw a German turn in there, which according to Google Translates means good afternoon. And we get to hear it in German. Guten Tag. And it tries to do it with a different type of accents that you normally find within that particular region. Now, I'm not a German person or anything like that. I have no clue whether that's correct or not, but that's what the voice synthesis attempts to do. How about, you want to try another one? How about a Spanish? from Spain, because there, there's actually two of them here. There's Spanish, let's see, it's down here. There's Spanish from Spain and Spanish in the US. So let's do Spanish from Spain. Uh, Spain. And let's type in something for Spanish. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Very good. Well, how about Spanish US? Buenas tardes. As you can tell, there's just a little bit of the difference between there. But of course, it's not limited to the, to the basic Latin languages like English, Spanish, German, or anything like that. Um, how about Hindi? Let's flip it over to Hindi. So I found, hopefully, Google Translate got this correct here, what the Hindi translation for good afternoon is. And let's paste that in there. This is one of the beauties about, uh, about extended codes within, or extended codes within uh, browsers, is that you can now get the I guess it's called the Hindi script, and I may be completely wrong there, but you got the script in there that you can that you can type in, and it will interpret it for you automatically. I'll be doing a whole thing on character co encoding and things like that a little bit later on. So let's do Hindi. Let's say it. Namaskar. Yep. Hopefully that was hopefully that was correct. How about 
Chinese. And I've got the, what they call the traditional, or, or the traditional Chinese here. And again, hopefully it's right, I'm not Chinese. That's supposed to be good afternoon, let's see. And hopefully that was correct. As you can tell there, you can select different languages, different voices, if they are available. In this case, a lot of these, there's only one particular language available from Google, but you can change the pitch. I'm gonna go back to English here. Uh, why? Because I, I happen to be English. Well, I happen to speak English. Let's just take a look at some of the other ones. Well, we can do the pitch. This is the normal pitch. We'll, we'll stick with David here. Good afternoon. Let's take the pitch all the way up to two and see what happens. Good afternoon. As you can tell the pitch got a little higher. Let's go all the way back down to zero and see what happens. Good afternoon. As you can tell, it got a little bit lower. You can also change the rate. The rate is a little, let's change it. Let's double the speed of, of, of what um, David says here. Good afternoon. Let's triple the speed of what David says. Good afternoon. Let's five times the speed of what David said. Good that afternoon. Was, that was 4.9. Let's try it again. Good afternoon. So you see, you can change the pitch, the rate, the kind of voice, language, volume, anything like that. So that's basically all the things you can do with the utterances. Now, let's take a look next on how the code works. So using the utterance object is ridiculously easy. Let's take a quick look at it. So this happens to be the older code that I had used on my speech synthesis boring JavaScript. So all I did was just get the new utterance object and did it do a speak. Well, now we got a little bit different here. We're gonna get the utterance from a method. Here's the method. First thing I want to do is get an actual instance of the uh, utterance, which I can get from the speech synthesis utterance object, and I'm passing it to it the text within the text box. To set the language, I update the language property. And in this case, I'm getting it from the select box. To update the pitch, I'm changing the pitch property. And in this case, I'm getting it from the pitch text box. To update the rate, to change the rate, I'm setting the rate property. And I'm getting this from the rate text box. To change the voice, I'm setting the voice property. And I'm getting this from a map that I built earlier, which I'll show you here in just a second. It's one of the only gotchas that I found when I was developing this particular boring JavaScript video. And then finally, to set the volume, all you have to do is change the volume property. And I'm getting that from the text box. I return the utterance. It speaks it up here at line 85, and that's it. There is nothing else. Now, the one thing I said I wanted to show you was how I got all those languages, because one of the problems that I've found that I run into is that when I started at my browser, when I started at my web page, speech synthesis, I wanted to be able, I, speech synthesis was automatically available to me, and I wanted to get a listing of all the different languages. And it says that, hey, you can get all the different languages by uh, accessing you know, something within speech synthesis, which I'll show you here in just a second. So I did that, and I would get no languages whatsoever. I never got a listing of languages. And I said, what the heck's going on? Well, I found out that getting the list of languages that are available to you from within, from within your speed synthesis, you, it, you need to treat it as if it is an asynchronous operation because, well, it is an asynchronous operation. So just because you started up your browser doesn't mean that all those languages are available to you. You're gonna to have to listen to an event and that event is called Voices Changed. And this event always gets fired on the speech synthesis whenever the, the, the content of the voices have changed. When speech synthesis first starts up, there'll be no voices into it until the operating system tells the browser, hey, here are all the voices that I support, and there you go. So once the browser gets that information, it will fire off the voices changed. So once I fire off the voices changed, I'm gonna do a, a routine called populate voices and language. So let's take a quick look at that very quickly. It's, a very, it's very, very simple here. I first of all clear my mapping. I happen to have, let's go way up back up here. Here's languages up here. I had to happen to have created a map. And if you, I, I did a video on map a long, long time ago. So check out the video if you're not sure what a map is. But you want to use that more than you want to use objects. So I'm clearing out the map itself. I'm using the get voices method on speech synthesis to get all the different voices. And once I got all the different voices, they're in a simple array. So I'm just doing a very simple for each. And I am a, I'm populating my languages uh, uh, map to be able to hold all the different languages that the, that the get voices allows me to get. And I'm not gonna go into detail what all they are, all the, all, all the information that you get here, because you can pretty much tell from the, from the code here what it gets. And then 
I populate within this section right here, I do the, I populate all my different uh, lists uh, on the screen. I, I populate the list at the very bottom of the screen and I populate my select down. And again, this is just simple population here. But this allows me to be able to get all of the different languages that are available. And within those languages, you also have all the different voices. So when I do select a language, I can grab that from the languages map here and then populate the pull down bar and populate the language, I'm sorry, the, the different inflections or different voices listing that, that are on the very bottom. So this, uh, so that's the one the thing I wanted to make sure you understood is that the voices that you have are not gonna be immediately available to you. You're gonna to have to do an, an event, an ad event listener on voices changes to be able to get all the different, so when that fires, you'll be able to get all the different voices that are available to you. And that's all there is for utterances. I hope you enjoyed our video. Hope it didn't bore you to death. Please make sure to click on the like button below and click on the subscribe button in order to be able to get notifications of whenever we, we produce new boring JavaScript videos. You can also check out all the videos we've created at www.boringjavascript.com or see everything we've done at www.thevirtualoid.com. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.